Sorry. So you just know each other anyway, do you? It's just my daughter. Oh, is it really? <laughs> Thought it was your sisters. <laughs> okay, right. I'll just run through what we're going to do. I'll tell you a little bit about myself first of all, okay? And then there's just a few little sort of teasers of what we're going to run through, but obviously, essentially, it's about nutrition tonight, okay? That's what Brad's asked us to come along for. So the format that we're going to do is I'll tell you about me. I'm going to run through, I think, the real basics of nutrition. And they are quite basic. And at least if you take something from it, you've learned something. And the reason we're going to go quite basic is because it's generally the basics which let people down. So we're going to cover those. And then at the end, we'll do any questions and stuff. And I appreciate you might have some questions as we go. Um, but what I'd suggest is we'll probably just do them at the end um, rather than risk getting off topic and stuff like that. That's the best we have found to do it in the past. Um, I'd definitely not be here for two hours. We just scheduled two hours in because I didn't know how many people would be here for questions and stuff, all right? So my name is Lee and uh, I am a personal trainer. I'm from Newcastle, but I live in Sunderland. Um, I've been training probably about 30 years now, um, but like seriously, probably about 20. Uh, I've competed on stage. I love nutrition, I love doing this sort of stuff and that, it's, it's what I do for a living. Previous to personal training, I used to uh, be an operations manager in a call centre. So I used to manage managers and hundreds of people and uh, I've managed a shop at the Metro Centre. The reason I'm telling you that is that at, at the centre of what I do, it's about people, people focus on that. And that's why I've got such an interest in this and trying to make people better through nutrition and training. Right, so. I am filming this for my YouTube channel, okay, so if there's anything that you maybe thought was quite poignant, um, I'll give Brad the link tomorrow and upload it, and you'll be able to recover it off. But I'll tell you about my social media at the end as well. There's lots of stuff in there. Right, let's start. I have got a little bit of a notebook as well. I always have this, okay, I just don't want to miss out key things, so if I refer to it, it's not because I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> okay. Let's start with the basics and so what, why do we exercise? Okay, I'll try and make it a bit interactive. Why are you exercising, Sue? Um, just to get better healthier, lose a bit of weight. Okay. It's strong. Right, okay. And Zoe? I enjoy it and I tone up the bone with. Okay. Where are you going? I'm going to Ireland. Oh yeah? Yeah. This year? Yeah, like in four weeks. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And the answers you give there is pretty much the normal answers for people other than like the health benefits. Um, you'll probably be aware exercise offers you sort of emotional benefits and that and confidence and anxiety and stuff like that. But what a lot of people don't tend to realize is that probably about 85% of what you're doing is all nutrition driven. And this is where people let themselves down. For example, I train five hours a week. So five times a week, one hour time. So what I'm doing outside of that training and what you're doing outside of this door with Brad is really going to have an impact massively on your goals for getting healthier, toning up, getting ready for traveling, getting stronger for your deadlifts and stuff like that. And when people don't take advantage of those opportunities to eat right and they just eat like an arsehole, then everything you're doing here is really wasted. Okay? So nutrition is the key thing, the key factor that you've got to get right. So, let's talk about um, these three things here, which is carbs, protein, and fats. We've heard of those, okay. They're called macronutrients. Have you heard of that before? Okay, macro means large. So I'm gonna cover them off individually, and maybe just give you a bit more of an insight into each one. So, Sophie, give us an example of some carbs. Bread, rice, pasta, mm -hmm. sugar. Yeah, good. Any others that you can think of, Zoe? Yeah, really good, yeah. All carbs, all carbohydrates, okay. You might not believe this, but your body doesn't need carbohydrates at all. Okay. We just eat them. Yeah, we crave them. And I'll come on to why we crave them later on. But it doesn't need carbohydrates at all, okay. Protein and fats, okay. So, Sue, give some examples of protein. Chicken, fish. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good. Sophie? Protein yeah. shakes? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cottage cheese, things like that. Fish, things like that. Okay. Any idea why we need protein? 
phones away. Just have a think. Skinny arms. <laughs> Helps what? Yeah, yeah. Sophie? Oh, you've been listening to me podcasts. <laughs> You're right. Basically, you made up a protein, essentially. You made up with proteins and fats, okay? So your muscle cells, your fibers, they're all made of protein, okay? So protein is what we call an essential macronutrient, okay? Your body needs it, and it needs it really, really regular. So as Sophie said, your nails, your hair, your skin, the lining of your intestinal tract, it's all made of protein, okay? So when you hear people banging on about you need protein every two or three hours, there's actually a reason for it, okay? And the thing with protein is you can't store protein, okay? How carbs can be stored and fat can be stored. So protein shuttles in, gets used, and what's left shuttles out, okay? So you need regular steps of protein every day. And generally for women, it's five meals, Certified five meals, men six, okay? So you've probably been, you've seen uh, diet plans, I would imagine where it says every couple of hours you need to take protein on board, okay? That's not just because somebody fancied writing it, that's because there's no storage. But what you can't do, you see, is you can't take a load of protein on first thing in the morning and think, right, that's gonna get me through the day. Say for 100 grams of protein, say two chicken breasts. Because you can only depend on your size and your frame and your age and your gender. You can only process so much protein at once. So probably for you ladies, it might be about 25, 30 grams maximum. So if you took a load of protein on, your body will use that protein. And then when you go to the toilet and everything, it'll just excrete or you'll urinate everything else out. And straight away at that point, your body's in a deficit. It needs protein. Okay, now as you alluded to before, when you're doing exercise, you're absolutely right. So when we're in exercise rate and you've been doing your presses or, or whatever, okay, and you, you're breaking those muscle fibers down, those muscle fibers, as we know, are made of protein. So if you don't feed the protein into your body, then the work you've done is for nothing. And the analogy I'll use to that is if you get a bricklayer to come round and he brings a load of bricks and you say, Bill is a wall, he doesn't have any mortar, okay, the, the, what's gonna keep the bricks up, what's gonna happen to the bricks? They're, just, they're not going to stay up, they're just going to fall over. So if you imagine the mortar for the bricks is the protein for your body. So it's absolutely essential, okay? And then the third one is fats. Okay, fats are also essential. And about 20 years ago, people didn't think fats were essential. Okay, so if you think we've been on about muscles and the muscle fibers, so you've got your muscle fibers which are made of protein, and then surrounding that is uh, the, the membrane, the cell membrane, and that's made of fat, okay? So years ago, probably 70s into the 80s and that, when diets would come out, everybody would be like, no fat, I'm not having any fat. It's a low fat diet, I'm stopping all fat. And that was wrong, we know that's wrong now. And the reason it's wrong is that because fat and protein, again, are building blocks of your body. Now, if you deprive your body of fat, and I'll talk to you about the three fats in a second, if you deprive it of fat, it's gonna do one thing. Any fat you've got, it's gonna hoard, and it's gonna store it. So you're trying your very best to lose fat by eliminating fat, but you're not losing any fat, okay? Now, if you imagine you're at the bottom of a set of stairs, okay, and at the top of the stairs is the body that you want for traveling, okay? The easiest way to get up the stairs is just walk up them. You've got the body you want, okay? But by not feeding your body with protein, regular, and not taking fats on board, I'm at the top of the stairs chucking boxes down at you, and you've got to try and hop over and dodge. And if you're tenacious, you'll get up, but you probably end up going back to the start again and trying again, and that's what happens when you don't eat enough or you don't eat enough of the right stuff, okay? So carbohydrates are non-essential to your body, okay? And if you didn't eat another carbohydrate in your life, it'd be a miserable life, but you would absolutely live, okay? And I'll come on to a, a type of diet which you could possibly try later on, okay, which is carb-free, essentially. Protein and fats, absolutely essential. Okay. So the three types of fats that we've got. We've got saturated fats, 
And these are the types of fats that you might find where? Anybody? You're not getting into trouble if you don't answer it right. So you get them from animal fats, animal proteins, okay? And we don't need loads of them. We just need enough, just a small amount, because we need cholesterol in the body, and um, they help regulate hormones like the sex hormones and stuff like that that help you grow. We only need a little bit, okay? Your next type of fats you've got is your mono fats, your monosaturated fats, okay? And these type of fats are really heart healthy. The body likes these types of fats, okay? And you'll get them from nuts, uh, avocados, avocado oil, olive oil, that sort of thing, okay? So your body likes them, okay? They help lubricate your body, okay? And then you've got your main fats. These are your essential fats, okay? And these are your polysaturated, polyunsaturated fats. And you've got two types. You might have heard of these, omega-3s and omega-6s. Have you heard of them? You can get them in tablet form, obviously. But it is better if we do get them from food. So your omega-6 are your essential fats, okay? And we get them from the likes of salmon and mackerel and things like that, okay? So if you're looking at eliminating fats from your body, then that's a, a really bad thing. What's your thoughts on fats with your current diet, Zoe? Running through your normal diet at the moment, just like top level. So talk us through today. Talk us through today. Yeah, what time is that? Okay. Carrot sticks. What time is that? Okay. Right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I mean, that's quite regular. That's quite a lot. Why do you think you don't eat enough? Is that a good day today, was it all? How many is your calories? Okay. Is that quite normal for you? Just depends. On what? How many calories should you be shooting for, dude? You know. I think, I think when I've done my calculations, my body needs like one thousand three hundred. I think the main thing. Okay. What about you today, Sue? Talk us through your diet today. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Do you know, without being two persons, do you know how much you weigh, approximately? How much? Okay. What about yourself? Okay, so that's about eight and a half stone, I think. Is it? Okay, yeah. So from the sounds of what you're saying, like from a calorie perspective and that, it's totally, like, probably not enough calories, and I'll tell you why that's an issue, but your protein level, is something that we need to be looking to hit and I'll explain how we can we can look to hit that because if you're not hitting your protein levels it's as I say your body's going to be in a deficient state and all this work that you're doing it's not going to be able to, to rebuild that muscle so from a protein perspective the easiest way to shoot for your protein is whatever however many pounds you weigh just try and get one gram of protein for that Okay, so if you weigh, for example, 140 pounds, then you should be looking at 140 grams of protein every day. And that is actually really quite easy to hit. A lot of numbers can put people off, but if you were to break it down, for example, a tin of tuna is 20 grams, a protein shakes 25 grams, one egg's 8 grams, a large chicken breast is 70 grams, one burger patty is 15 grams, um, half a tub of cottage cheese is about 30 grams, the protein bar is 20 grams. So if we were to write those down and you would think, right, what time do I get up and what time do I go to bed and how do I slot in that? It's a lot easier to do that rather than the guesstimates because all you're trying to do is find 140 grams. It's dead, dead easy. I'll come on to how I plan my day later on. 
but I hit on average about 350 grams of protein a day and, and like I don't even I don't even think about it. it it just happens so protein and fats moving forward is really really essential I'm sure Brad will help you with that the other issue that you've got there is coming under your calories so as you write your, your body probably needs about 1300 calories that's what you've suggested so if it doesn't get those calories on a regular basis have you any idea what happens to your body to do with the metabolism yeah totally slows down okay because what it's essentially saying is i'm not getting enough nutrients so i'm going to protect myself i'm going to go into like a survival mode so i'm going to slow everything down so all that fat that you want to recruit and burn it's going to hold on to it because every day you don't give us enough calories it's essentially what the body does and it's quite counterproductive when you're trying to lose weight that you're being told you need to eat more and more frequently it just doesn't add up it doesn't make sense and i can see you sort of nodding there probably sounds have you, have you experienced that before or heard that before yeah why does it why does it sound crazy yeah yeah you're right and you're not alone there with guys as well honestly it's not a female thing it's a guy thing so if you think of steam train steam train runs on coal yep and you've seen the engineers and all the time they're just feeding coal often yeah they don't at the start of the station pile it all in and go right train go 300 miles because it would be sluggish the engine wouldn't run efficiently enough they keep feeding little bits of coal because it's efficient then and it's burning and that's the same with your metabolism so the counterproductive way to get through people's heads and no offense to anybody from Weight Watchers or swim, Slimming World because this blows the mind but like you have to actually eat food and then your metabolism speeds up and takes it only takes a couple of weeks and if you were to start dropping food off then your body be like Let's give some food what's going on I need food and that's the process that a lot of people don't get their head around they go in a calorie deficit and they don't actually lose any weight or they become skinny fat do you know what skinny have you heard of skinny fat so it's where you're not building any muscle because you're not getting any of the nutrients that you need and all you're doing is just dropping pure weight so you go from a fat person to a smaller fat person so the key takeaway here is do you, do you support on the nutrition do you yeah okay more burpees every hundred calories you come under hundred burpees yeah I, I get why it goes over the top of your head honestly uh, you're not alone on it but if you can get on top of it you, you just it'll blow your mind seriously it really really works like you know do you have any feedback any sort of actions on that that we spoke about there Yeah, it's a specific type of diet which I'll cover off in that, but it's going regular eating because when I met Sophie in that, she's just like all over the shop, as a lot of people are. So while you were talking there, try not to be rude, but I've just consumed a protein shake there, and in that was peanut butter, which I brought with us. So the reason I've had that is because I need food regular, and around about this time, it's half six, I would be due to have something. Obviously, I'm not going to have a meal in front of you. The point I'm trying to make here is that when you when you goal orientated, nutrition comes first. It's got to. Now everywhere I go, when I'm travelling around, I take my Tupperware with us and I'll take some food. And that's because when I feel hungry or I need food, I've got it and I've prepared it. I know what's in it. I don't have to go to Subway, I don't have to guess what's in food. I've prepared it. And it's cost efficient as well, you know, rather than going out on a whim, feeling hungry. And then hungry and think shit well i'll just get something 
to curb the hunger like you know so those little things like I, I need that now because I need to get my protein in and I'm due some food and I'd sooner miss a training session than, than miss food so I've had the protein shake um, and coming on to people's jobs which you sort of alluded to before a lot of people are stuck with jobs where the bosses are arseholes you're in meetings etc and you're not allowed to eat so it's, you cannot really get some food but in the same vein, I bet you've got a bottle of water, I bet you, you're okay to get a cup of tea. So taking a couple of protein shakes a day, they don't have to be made, they've just got to have the powder and some peanuts or some walnuts or some peanut butter is much better for you when it's mealtime to get your nutrition in, to hit your, your calories and take your protein intake and your fat intake because you get your fat from your peanuts and your peanut butter or your almonds or whatever. And then you're ready for another two or three hours to get to your, your, your next junction in the day rather than going all the way through the day, think I'm 400 calories down, what am I gonna do, you know? So there are ways and means around it. Have you got, because there's only a few of us, we'll, we'll take questions at, at each junction. Have you got any questions that you wanna ask on carbs, protein, and fats now? I don't mind. So are they on intermittent fasting or something like that? Are they on what? Okay. So what's your question then? About like timing. Like timing and then like what, like when you were saying about what you and how much protein was in. Okay. Like being aware and aware of that. Timing wise, the first thing you need first thing in the morning is protein. And I can't tell you how many people I'll see off you had for your breakfast and they go, oh, you're healthy this morning. What you had? Granola. So you might as well have a bag of sugar. Um, so it is convenient, and, and, but your, your brain, you see, is switched on to sugar, it loves it, it's addicted. And, and our eyes are so, uh, boxes are colourful and that oh, tastes amazing. Okay. But working towards your goals, you've got to be able to step to the side a little bit and say, is this op or does it offer us nutritional value? You know, I'm paying Brad X amount of pounds, whatever him to make me fitter and I'm getting ready to travel and I want to spend all this money and I want to know that every photo on Instagram whatever I'm looking my absolute best without 100 filters yeah okay so am I doing everything is every decision I'm making the right decision nutritionally for me so your first thing you want to do in the morning is have some sort of protein because that metabolically programs your day okay soon just take carbs on board you essentially you're still in a fasting state because it's just so heavy for you, for you to break down. Or if we're doing cereal, then your sugar is all the way through the roof. Insulin gets released, which will cover off as, as hormones later on and stuff. And then we've got a whole world of problems there as well. Okay, so I would say to somebody, don't force feed yourself. There's times when I'm, I can't be bothered with food and I'll just give it that break. You don't want to feel sick in that. But I would, I would have a look at how many hours you're generally up through the day, and then if you're 140 pounds, 150, 160, whatever, just try and divide that every sort of three hours, circuit every three hours. And if at two and a half hours you're hungry, then eat. Listen to your body, like, you know, diet plans, etc. don't have to be super rigid. So if we go every pound of your body, weight, we do one gram of protein. And then for fats, so it should be around about 0 0.5 grams. So if you were 140 pounds in weight, you would do 70 grams, <laughs> no, horrendous. Uh, you do 70 grams of fat through essentially the monounsaturates and the polyunsaturates. So you could get your, your fats through your fish, okay? Your supplements like an omega-3 or omega-6 supplement, even in primrose oil, which are great for women, help regulate your hormones, especially through your cycle and stuff. Nuts, peanut butter, avocado. So you get your fats, like, phew, no problem at all. Okay. And then your carbs, 0 0.5, 0 0.7. Keep your carbs low, and I'll explain to you why I think you should keep your carbs low later on. So probably 0 0.5, so 70 grams of carbs a day. And that would be good every sort of 
sort of two and every three hours like you know and don't don't forget a protein shake have that if instead of a meal like if all them foods are feeling full on your stomach we don't like feeling bloated but there are ways around getting protein in rather than having like a, a tummy like you know okay losing weight let's talk about losing weight who wants to lose weight you want to lose weight brad no definitely not uh zoe do you want to lose weight i think i just want to go inside great what a good answer how did you know that um yeah there's a real marked difference losing weight and losing fat is two completely different things and most people do just want to lose weight if i said to you let you answer this one if you like um what would you prefer would you prefer to have less fat cells or would you prefer to have smaller fat cells go around the room actually what would you answer so less fat cells or smaller fat cells than the ones you've got See. Smaller. okay I don't yeah you don't know the answer i'm going to tell you the answer so smaller as well. yeah. oh you just sit there <laughs> yeah okay it's a good answer if you want to lose the amount of fat cells you've got there's only one way you can do it liposuction they physically take it out of you okay and the two problems with that is it's a short-term fix because your body's just going to regenerate them because it needs fat and you haven't changed or altered the metabolic issue that your body had which made you fat to start with okay so making fat cells smaller is the right answer and we do that through exercise and nutrition the whole thing comes back to nutrition exercise and nutrition so they've done some studies quite recently but they do them all the time and the latest ones i was looking at in america whereas they took it was an obese nation as we know they took a control group of fat people i'm not being derogatory the fat that's all i'm saying i'm not calling them fatties so they took a control group okay and they gave them a perfect diet for three months okay the exact same diet that they'd give somebody who was just a regular joe okay and the fat people just didn't change really at all very slight percentages change in some of the health benefits but from a physical element they didn't change at all and the reason they didn't change at all is because the metabolic system is just a pure car crash okay now i've come across so many people who are very overweight and i'll say right is your diet plan out and they'll keep it and it looks pretty okay actually and you're thinking hold on this person's eating really well why are you overweight and what happens is is that for me for example or for brad okay just as a, a, an immediate example if somebody put me down some pancakes and maybe some bacon and some sausage and some fried eggs and that like it's probably not the most nutritious meal we would have okay and we would eat it and what would happen is the body would take those nutrients and they would send them to the right places where they need to go because metabolically that's what my body does because it's been conditioned that way but what was happening with this study group is these nutrients were going to knock on the, the cells where they needed to go and the cells were like no you're not coming in there's too much of you. you you've been spoiling your body forever just get in the corner and go and store yourself so this is what's happening to people who for years and years and years have ate really really bad that even when they try and get on great diets they find that they can't get any results and it's not because the diet didn't work it's because the body has shut down over years and a recent study in america showed that women up to the age of 70 spend 17 years on diets just trying to swap and change well actually all we need to do is find the right diet and stick with it because it will work so if you've been given something zoe that's 1300 calories a day actually you want to build muscle and it was a great answer there but you're going to struggle unless you start giving your body what it requires which is food okay so what do you think the best diet is to be on go around the room you best diet yeah Okay. 
So what do you think the best diet is? Okay. So. Well done. You kept that off as well. Yeah. And do you still follow a, a Slim and Will style of eating? No, well, no, I've stopped because I've been too many carbs. This is the one that works for you, the one that you can, it's more sustainable. But I think, like, looking at if I did that, I would be, I'm, I'm high on my carbs now, I'm doing, trying to do the fitness power one. Yeah. Have you? What, what was your opinion of it then, Sophie? Um, not at Slim and World. Uh, I don't have a full yard, I have a very good relationship with food. Yeah. I'm quite obsessive with food. And Slim and World, I would be so obsessive. And I would have, so we have yes sins, which are obviously, yeah, they're brown and naughty foods. So yeah. Yeah, so Brad came up with the right answer there, whether he knows it or not, but the best diet for you to be on is the one that works for you. It's more of a trick question than anything else in that, because some diets are written and, and people find them horrendous in that, but then there's some diets which people just click with. And what I mean by working for you is that a slim and world works for you, and I don't agree with slim and world diets, okay, they hate me, but if it works for you, then that's okay, okay? So it's just to try and find something. So if your diet is working for you and you and you, stick on it. There might be three totally separate diets, okay? But I am going to talk to you a little bit about what I think is one of the best diets, okay? And, and Brad's mentioned it before there. I'm sure you've heard of it. So I didn't invent it. I'm not trying to sell it, okay? I'll just tell you.